Okay, so welcome back to the getting to know you uh, videos. So the first thing I want to talk about uh, is the idea of distributed uh, revision control or distributed source control uh, versus central source control. Now, if you guys don't know anything about source control, you can probably skip this video and just move on to the, to the very next one. Um, but for those who uh, are familiar with source control, this is a really nice concept to learn uh, when you start to uh, get to know Git, if you will. <laughs> Um, because there's a lot of concepts here that want that kind of change your mindset and how you think about these things. Okay, so let's let's talk about um, central source control. So source controls like CVS, SVN. There's a whole bunch of others that I don't really know about. Um, they kind of work on, under this model. So the model is you basically have a central server called your central repository. So think of this as you're working with a bunch of buddies or a bunch of coworkers in your office. You basically have one server set up as your central repository. Now this guy's going to be responsible for everything. He's going to kind of carry your master code base. So all your files are going to be in there and it's going to keep tr track of everything. It's going to keep track of all the check-ins, you know, all the different versions of the files, the history, all the branching, everything, right? It's kind of controlled by the central repository. And the way this works is kind of everybody else has their own computers that kind of hook up to the central repository. So think of it this, like again, you, you have an employee, you have a, you have a workplace, an office of four people, so these four computers down here, and they're gonna be collaborating on a project. Uh, and what they're gonna use is they're gonna use a central repository to collaborate on that. So what typically happens is, okay, let's say you're a computer two here and you're gonna start working on this project, you generally, check out code. So in other words, you grab a copy of the latest code and it's on your computer. Then you make a bunch of changes and then you kind of check those changes back into the central repository. So then the central repository at that point knows, okay, there's a new version of these files. Let's say you edited three files, you check them back in the central repository and there's three files up there. So now when, you know, the person sitting at computer three grabs the latest code, now the changes that you've put into here, they will sit down in here as well. So the idea is that all these computers down here are communicating with one central repository for all the latest changes, all the updates, everything like that. And again, computer three will make some changes and send it back up to central repository. So this is how central source control works. All the smarts, all the brains, all the code base, everything like that sits on this one server uh, where you're running you know, a CVS server or SVN server or whatever it may be, right? And then your client computer is basically Check, it, check out code and check in code to that central repository. So they don't really have logic in here. Now, that is very different from distributed uh, source control or distributed revision control. So with distributed vision control, we actually do away with the central repository. We get rid of it. And what we say is that each individual computer, okay, each client or whatever, is, is capable of all this repository smarts, if you will. So like, you know, the ability to track changes and have versions and to have branches and everything like that. Every one of these computers has that capability. In other words, you can picture it like each one of these computers has its own uh, source control server sitting on there, right? So this guy could start committing code and everything like that. And it, it's like essentially committing code to itself. And then you have all these versions sitting on there. So with distributed source control, each one of these repositories has those smarts in it, it has that capability to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take one of these computers as an example, okay? And the next bunch of videos that we're gonna deal with, deal with just the one computer, okay? Deal with one, what we call repository, okay? So in the next couple of videos, just keep in mind that we're dealing with just the single system, okay? When we get to video five or six or somewhere along there, we'll talk about how to interact with other computers and how you can interact with other repositories. But for the next couple of videos, like the next three or four videos, just remember everything you're doing is relative inside this little computer, right? You're not communicating with any outside computers. It's just your local computer or if you will, your local repository, okay? So that's the difference between distributed and central, okay? So just once again, central has this idea that you have one server sitting in, uh, between all the computers and it has all the smarts. It has all the brain and all the technology to track revisions, to track versions, to track branches, all this stuff like that. Right? And again, in distributed source control, it's not the only one. In fact, we do away with the central repository 
And we say all of these guys have the ability to have their own repository. They have their own ability to have branches and revisions and whatever, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to just take one of those repositories, one of those computers, and we are going to focus just on this guy for the next couple of videos. Okay, on to the next one.